Hello and welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa, joined today by our very special guest, Helena Stone from ChipChick.com. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to break down the top tech news stories of the day, answer one of your reader questions, and then show you one cool thing that Helena has brought in to the lab. And let's get to the big news of the day. The Xbox is getting disconnected this summer. Microsoft's going to cut the cost of the Xbox to $399 and remove the Kinect sensor as a default bundle. This is sort of what everybody was asking for when the product came out. We thought they might have to go here. Sales are evidently disappointed. This is a huge reversal for Microsoft. Yeah, it is pretty funny because they're basically backtracking what they originally said, which is when they launched the Xbox, they're like, the Kinect is really an essential part of the system. And it still is an essential part of the system. I mean, it enables you to do so many things, video calls, gestures. Um, but at the end of the day, the hardcore gamers weren't buying an Xbox the way Microsoft anticipated they would. And at the end of the day, just having a game controller is really all you need to, for that hardcore gaming experience. And now that will allow an even bigger buyer base to lock on to the Xbox. I think there might be problems though, because they designed this interface specifically uh, for the Kinect. There's going to be like you. little things that they don't think about. They're like, oh yeah, the only way to do that is with the Kinect. And they're not gonna, you're not going to see all those things until all of a sudden the Kinect is taken away. I, I totally agree with you. I think it's going to be really frustrating for people to use the, in, the, user, the user interface without the Kinect. Um, but at the, at the other hand, like if it's going to sell more Xboxes for them, you know, no one cares. Microsoft has also said that by the end of the summer, they will have an option to buy the Kinect separately. Yeah. So you know, for those who want to shell the cash for it right away and will probably be frustrated later on and will want the Kinect, they'll have that option to do that. Yeah, and this brings them into total price parity with the PlayStation 4, which has been selling very well. So it'll be an interesting summer. I mean, they've got the money, they can cut the price. I think it'll be really interesting. Um, let's move on to our next story, uh, and that's that Russia is threatening to kick the United States out of the International Space Station. Um, now, that's, it's th the truth of the matter is anybody can go to the International Space Station. The problem is the United States can't get to the International Space Station without using Russian rockets. And because of the, uh, the protests and the sanctions in the UK on the Ukraine, um, this is starting to be a problem. Well, first of all, I think that it's still kind of speculation. The the guy over in Russia's uh, space station, he tweeted this out. So yeah. we, this is not really confirmed news, but uh, people are talking about it because they're kind of getting you know up in arms about it. Uh, the fact is, is that the U.S. pays sixty million dollars per astronaut per U.S. astronaut um, to Russia um, for them to transport U.S. astronauts to the space station. So then there's also the fact that the U.S. was also a part of paying for the International Space Station to begin with, and they pay three billion dollars a year to maintain that space station. So um, it's pretty obnoxious for the Russians to say, well, you can't ride with us anymore. Yeah, and uh, so it's Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin, and his tweet that he posted was, I propose that the United States delivers its astronauts to the ISS with the help of a trampoline. That would be an amazing trampoline. Those are fighting <laughs> words. And um, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Obviously, um, we need their help to get there. We can get, we can stay there if we want to, but we need their help to get there. I think we have till 2020. That's he yeah. said when it will, when it will take into effect if it really ever does. It, so. Indeed. And finally, the story that I find most interesting as a huge Game of Thrones fan, uh, the author of Game of Thrones, George R. R. It's taken me forever to finish this series. Martin uh, announced a little bit, showed a little bit of his writing process. Turns out he does all of his writing on a DOS-based PC using WordStar that is not connected to the internet. That is kind of shocking. So my first question when I heard this story was, how the hell does he get it off of his computer? Like, I mean, does he use a floppy disk? He's uh, going to have to, right? Is he printing off the story of the dot matrix printer? Because that's pretty historical. I can just imagine the beeps and him pulling off the perforated edges. I mean, it's it, that's old school. But I actually, it actually makes sense to me why he would do this. Because, I mean, when you have a, a computer connected to the internet, like you have every distraction in the world and it's really hard to focus. So as much as it's insane, it's actually brilliant to just write on a DOS computer with nothing to distract you. Yeah, he's got a separate computer that he uses for web browsing and email, but this is also a way to, it's also a secure way to keep the system protected. Nothing's more secure than that Nothing's, pretty much. Yeah, totally offline, not connected to the internet, um, although it doesn't seem to be helping him write any faster, uh. unfortunately, for me. Um, let's move on to our reader question. This question, we answer questions via Twitter, on Facebook, via email. You can send them to us, we'll answer them live on air. This question comes from Anne via Facebook, and she wants to know why she would want LTE in her car. It's actually a pretty good question, because all the automakers are rushing to build 4G connections into vehicles. Customers are wondering, why bother? It is a really good question because everybody has smartphones and hotspots nowadays, which they can use in their car anyway. 
Um, that said, like, I kind of feel that LTE is kind of like the next version of FM radio, where, sure, people have FM radios at home, but it just makes sense to have it in your car. Uh, LTE is really going to enable so many different features for the car. I mean, there's apps being built into cars now, so you can have, you know, Pandora and all these other features working through the LTE, even if you forget your phone at home. So there definitely is a benefit to it. And the pricing structure that they've announced, I mean, starting at $5 for 200 megs a month, that's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, so I could see a lot of people opting for it. Do people need it? Will everyone go for it? Definitely not. Yeah, we'll see what the reception's like. And there's also, it opens up this idea of, uh, of remote diagnostics so that the, the, the dealer and the mechanic will be able to remotely diagnose your car in real time, maybe even in, before it breaks down, and tell you what's going on with the vehicle. So there, there's a lot of these sort of uh, value adds that could take place, but um, we have to see what the pricing's like, right? That'll be the big, that'll be the big thing. Is it affordable? Uh, well, so, well, so far, I think that their tentative pricing is pretty affordable. Um, it's just, well, how many people will, will want to pay extra on top of their wireless data plan that they have at home with their phones? That's going to be the big one. We shall see. Let's move on to one cool thing. We test thousands of products in our lab here in New York City. Every day we take one thing off the shelf and show it to you live on air. Helena actually brought today's cool thing in to the lab to show us, and it's, i got to say, it's pretty cool. It's the Skullcandy Knockout Headphones. These are not, these don't look like something I would wear. So they're not your knockouts. They're not my knockouts. <laughs> um, well, the thing that's very interesting about these headphones is that uh, Skullcandy is actually marketing them as headphones for women. Uh, they actually say that the headphones have been tuned for female ears. Uh, what does that mean, exactly? <laughs> what does that mean? There's no way for us to really verify it. Um, we've had guys and girls test the headphones, and they seem to be just the same as any other pair of headphones. They're pretty good sounding, that said. Um, but, you know, Skull Candy really has designed them with a feminine touch. I mean, there's a floral pattern option. Um, they are, you know, they do have female ap appeal. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, what I think is actually the most girly part of this product is the makeup-like case <laughs> that comes with it. Not bad. So, so, I mean, you know, even if you don't use it for headphones, you have a really snazzy potential makeup carrying case. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because more and more manufacturers are starting to design headphones for women. It's not just about the celebrity angle anymore. It's about, you know, this attacking this new demographic of women. And women do look at headphones differently than men. Um, so it'll, and you know, it's not pink. That's they've true. actually, they've defied that cliche. So uh, it's a, they've done a pretty good effort. Very cool. And the price on these? They're $100, uh, which isn't bad. I mean, that's con pretty, con pretty affordable by today's standards of headphones. Mm -hmm. So I think that they have a good um, they they have a good chance of doing well with these. And do you have a review up of these on your site? Yes, we do. On chipchick.com, check out chipchick.com if you read her full review. We're going to get one on PC Mag soon. Uh, thanks for joining us. That's PC Mag Live. We will have a brand new show for you tomorrow.